Hey, this is Richie Black, and this video is for uh, fraud investigations at U.S. Bank, uh, so I can prove my case to you guys. By the way, U.S. Bank guys, Richie Black is my stage name if you're wondering why the last name doesn't match your records. I'm also going to put this up on ripoffreport.com. You guys are going to eat this one up. And of course, it's on YouTube. Show this to everyone. Today we're going to talk about a song placement firm called Fast Break Music. They're based out of Los Angeles, uh, previously known as Song Placements, previously known as hit music group. Earlier this year, my old band was contacted on MySpace by a scout from Fast Break Music, and we were offered a song placement service, uh, something akin to Taxi.com, but more private and specialized, so they say, uh, $400 for a year with a renewal fee of uh, $200 after a year. What ended up happening is the band ended up dying and I forgot about it, but six months after we started our membership, this was May of 2010, six months later, I got automatically debited $200 out of my bank account. Now this would have made sense if it had been a year and my membership was up and that was the renewal fee, but six months? No, that's not what we agreed on. So I called the fraud department at US Bank and made my case and this is what Fast Break did to try to worm their way out. And this is me proving to Fast Break that you shouldn't have done that to me. So the first time I went to US Bank with this, they turned my claim into case number... Too many numbers, guys. But Fastbreak went and sent the bank a copy of what is supposed to be uh, the agreement that uh, occurred on May 17th, 2010. And they're trying to say, no, it wasn't a year, you're mistaken. It was three months for $400, and it was never a year. It was three months for $400. They go on to say that we have all of our potential members reply to our terms of agreement, either agreeing or not agreeing to the terms. He replied that he agreed. Yeah, yeah, I, I responded to this and I said, I agree, Richard Black. This entire thing is a lie, a fabrication, and before I go proving it to you, let's make a couple notes here. The title of the email was Welcome to Fast Break with an exclamation point, and it was on May 17th, 2010. Let's go ahead and log into my email. Uh, that's what MySpace has become now since it's dead. This is just my email. Let's go to my mail, and we're going to be looking for... May 17th, 2010. So, June, June. May 17th, 2010. Look at all this client services stuff from Fastbreak. Uh, let's go one more back. Here it is. Welcome to Fastbreak! Exclamation point. May 17th, 2010. We can see that there is no other email with that title like that on this date that I received. Okay, this is the only one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this email. Thank you for choosing Fast Break, blah, 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 blah. Oh, what is this? One year of service is $3.99, 400 bucks. That is really, really interesting. And you know what else is interesting here is, let's go back. I need to find the confirmation email that uh, Brett from Client Services sent to me. I think this is the confirmation email. It says confirmation email. Dear Richard, I'd like to run through the emails that you've received just to be sure you have clarity in the beginning stages of your membership. Email 1, welcome to Fast Break. Aside from it being a warm welcome to the company, it holds our terms and conditions in caps lock. As a formality, we're going to need you to read it. They never had me reply to it. And, you know, I, I'm curious as to um, how a typed reply is supposed to be considered valid in an investigation. I mean, there are such things as uh, online signatures, and if they really were to have me confirm that I agreed to those terms and conditions, they would have had me use uh, the proper way of uh, validating my agreeing to something online. And here's another thought, if it was three months and not a year, then why did they withdraw $200 six months later, not three months later, on November 1st? I mean, if you're going to be a scam artist, at least have your game straight. I mean, fast break, man, you guys are kind of lazy with the scamming stuff. This whole thing is a fake and a forge. We're going to just drown it in shoes right now because that's all I got is shoes. And just to cap all this off, we're going to go back to my email here. I'm going to go to my sent mail. I sent Fastbreak a request to cancel my membership on November 28th, 2010. Please cancel my membership. 
So in case uh, any future charges arise, uh, this is proof here that uh, I asked them to cancel my membership and it should be gone. And of course I found out way too late that I am not the first person who's had to deal with stuff like this from these guys. Uh, if we just type in fast break music scam, you get a lot of really interesting reading material. Print it out, take it with you to the bathroom. Quite a few people have a lot to say about fast break, drive music, uh, hit music group, and uh, what was it called before? Song placements. Apparently these are all the same guys. To be a lesson to all the young and impressionable musicians and producers, uh, make sure you do your homework. And in case you're wondering if they really did anything for uh, my band while we had our membership with them, just Google up discussions on these guys uh, and it's pretty much the same exact story. Uh, sending our music to really insanely low-end sources and even on that regard never landing any placement which makes you question are you even really sending these things to these people which uh, if you dig around enough you'll find a guy who took the extra step to follow through on the websites that they had claimed to send his music to and he went to those websites and said hey did you ever receive a uh, submission from fast break and a big chunk of them said no we never received anything so they're even lying to us about the services that they're uh, apparently uh, providing even after all this uh, these guys are so uncoordinated and lazy that I can still log in to my account on their website let's go in here there's nothing here all my band ever did was upload a picture and uh, upload a few songs I don't even know how many songs we got in there three four songs we never finished the press kit so what exactly were they sending out to most of these guys if they whipped up a press kit for us they never told us and they never sent it to us so we could use it to pursue uh, some of our own things thanks for watching guys I like to kick ass